Despite the drizzle and the clouds outside, it is a good day to be in Austin, Texas. Amen. In fact, it's a good six weeks to be in Austin, Texas. We all know why, right? Because this week, February the 2nd, the church celebrates the presentation of the Lord, but here in the United States, we celebrate what? Groundhog Day. <laughs> right? Yeah. And you heard what happened in the North. In the North, we have a groundhog whose name is Phil. Puxatawney Phil. And Phil came out of his burrow, and Phil told us what? Six more weeks of winter for them. <laughs> Don't you love Austin, Texas? In Austin, Texas, we have our own meteorologist whose name is what? BK Bob. I didn't know about BK Bob until this week on NPR. I don't know about Have you heard of BK Bob? BK Bob is an armadillo. And BK Bob, according to the story on NPR, BK Bob comes out, they put him out on February the 2nd to predict whether we're going to have six more weeks of winter or no. And while in the north, Puxatawney Field says that they're going to have six more weeks of winter, what's happening in Austin? No. Spring is on its way. <laughs> it's a good time to be in Austin. Yes. Amen. Amen. Keeping Austin different, right? <laughs> There's just something about adding spice to life like that, right? While the rest of the world is watching Punxsutawney Phil, Austinites are watching Bee Cave Bob. Adding some spice to life. And isn't that what Jesus is talking about in today's Gospel? Is how it is that we could add some spice to life? How is it we could be like salt? Have any of us ever tasted plain food that needed salt? Oh, yeah. I'd be like, pass the salt, please. <laughs> well, life can be like that sometimes, amen? amen? Life sometimes can be like those mashed potatoes that just need some salt. And the good news is that Jesus comes along and in today's gospel says, brothers and sisters, got good news. It's up to us to be the salt in this world. Amen. It's up to us to bring some seasoning, some flavor in this world. Amen. I suspect if Jesus lived in Texas today, he wouldn't use the salt analogy. He'd probably say, we're called to be Chile in this world. <laughs> we're called to be Chile. Right? Bring some spice to life. God will love the fact that Jesus encourages us to bring spice to life. But you know what? Fake news brings spice to life. Politicians bring spice to life. Entertainers bring spice to life. Playground bullies bring spice to life. It's not just about bringing spice to life, follow me. It's about bringing light to this world. Did you catch that? Jesus is talking to us about being salt and light. Some of you may know that I've been on an, Aven an Avengers kick these few weeks, right? Have you seen the Avengers, the Age of Ultron? So, Ultron brings some spice to this movie. Ultron is a bad guy. Ultron brings some spice to this movie with his plot to take over the world. With his creation of an army of bots. With his deportation of the Sokovians from this world. His plan is to take over the world. He's bringing some spice to life. But that's not light. We're called to be salt and what? Light. Do you remember the day of your baptism? No. Let me tell you what happened on the day of your baptism. On the day of your baptism, your godparents were holding a candle. Maybe you've seen this at other baptisms. And why was your godparent holding a candle at your baptism? It was a symbol that you were receiving what? The light of Christ. We're called not only to bring spice to this world, but we're called to lift up the light of Christ as well. Bringing spice to life, but also bringing light. Sort of reminds me, 
the slide up. The story of the, the dancing duck. Have you heard the story before the dancing duck? So one day, according to the story, there was a, a, a circus barker who was going through the city, through the tourist district of the city, and he saw a duck dancing on a pot. And the duck was dancing on the pot, and he thought, that would be a really cool circus trick, the dancing duck. The duck was dancing on the pot. And so he asked the guy, how much, how much would you sell your dancing duck for? He said, I'll sell you the duck and the pot for $10,000. Whoa, it's right. $10,000 for a dancing duck, though? I'll take it, he said. He paid the $10,000, took the duck and the pot. A week later, he came back and said, I want my money back. I want my money back, he said. Why? Because the duck isn't dancing. And what did the man tell him? He said, well, did you try putting a candle under the pot? <laughs> right? Did you try putting a candle under the pot? That's what was making the duck dance. Isn't it true that some of us, that life that we received at baptism, is it true that some of us, instead of holding it up for all to see, is it true that sometimes we think of hiding that candle under a pot as well? Yeah, I'm Christian, I receive the light of Christ, but I'm in a situation where I'm not sure I want to like let that light shine. What does Jesus tell us in today's gospel? He says, don't put that light under a what? Don't put that light under a basket. Was that light meant to be put under a basket? No, that light was meant to be put on a stand to shine. And when we put it under a basket, we risk what? That that light is going to diminish. Jesus says, let that light shine. Let that light shine before all so that all might see that light and give glory to the Father. Be proud of that light. Any Longhorns fans in the room? <laughs> Cowboys fans? Yeah. Patriots? Falcons? No. <laughs> Isn't it something that we can be so proud of our sports teams, right? We, we wear the jerseys of our sports teams and we're so proud and then when it comes to our Christianity, are we proud enough that we wear that like a jersey too? It's Super Bowl Sunday. Are you ready for a little Super Bowl humor? Yeah. We all know who's in the Super Bowl this year. This year it's the New England Patriots and the Atlanta Falcons. Breaking news, Patriots and Falcons today. We're wondering... The story is told that the New England's patriot Tom Brady died and went to heaven. And when Tom Brady, the New England Patriots quarterback, is in heaven, God shows him to his place. A nice little house in heaven with the New England Patriots flag in the front. Yeah, it was a pretty cool place. Tom Brady was happy to be in heaven until... He saw the house on the other side of the street. And the house on the other side of the street was as red as Joseph's sweatshirt. Following, it was red and black, that house was across the street, and it was huge! It was a big old mansion that was red and black. It had a 50-foot flag pole with the, the Atlanta Falcons flag in the front yard. In the back was a pool in the shape of the Atlanta Falcons logo. In every window was the Atlanta Falcons logo. You follow me here? On the front door was the jersey of Matt Ryan, the quarterback for the Falcons today. And Tom Brady of the New England Patriots said, God, I don't mean to be ungrateful. I don't want to be ungrateful, but how did I... An all-star quarterback. I won, I, won a few, I won a few Super Bowls in my time. And I get this little house. And across the street, you're giving Matt Ryan a big mansion like this? <coughs> and God said, Matt Ryan? No, that mansion is mine. <laughs> Sisters, 
scriptures? <laughs> are we as proud of our faith as we are of our sports teams? Follow me? Are we ready to, to proudly wear and lift up the light of our faith in the same way that we are of the sports teams that we sometimes wear? How different, how light-filled this world would be. John Winthrop was a, was a Protestant preacher who in 1630 preached a sermon saying that we have to be a light on a hill. Going back to this story in today's gospel, right? All of us are called to be that light on a hill. So when people look at us, what they see is light. And the light that we bring to this world. 330 years later, John F. Kennedy, you remember John F. Kennedy? He talked to this in a similar way, saying we have to be a light on a hill, doing good for others. Martin Luther King, in his letter from the Birmingham jail, said we have to be a light on a hill. Where were they getting all of this? From the Bible. From today's story in Matthew saying, be a light, let your light shine. From today's first reading from the, from the, from the prophet Isaiah saying, every time we do good things in this world, the light breaks forth. From today's psalm, which says, those who live justly are a light in the darkness for the upright. Have you heard the song, God Bless America? God Bless America was a song that became famous in 1938, written by Irving Berlin. Have you heard it before? God Bless America. Together.
Can people taste and see the goodness of the Lord in your words and in your actions? Brothers and sisters, let us think deeply today on that challenge of being salt and light in this world so that others might taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I invite us to close our eyes and reflect on how it is that we've been salt and light, or how it is that we haven't been salt and light in this world, and to listen to the words of this song challenging us to help others to taste and see the goodness of the Lord.